I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. We discuss our own paranormal experiences and celebrate this terrifying city that's built upon its dead. Presented by the team that brought you America's number one immersive horror experience, the Savannah Underground. Prepare to cross the veil into the most haunted city on earth. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Most Haunted City on Earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And today we have Mindy with us. Yes, Mindy uh, is actually the reason why we created the Woman with Mismatch Fingers film. So, Mindy, would you like to uh, introduce yourself a little bit further? Yeah, sure. I'm Mindy. I'm 28. I live in Mobile, Alabama, and I have a nightmare disorder. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think we said that when we read your ghost mail the first time, like when you said, you're like, I have a nightmare disorder. And we're like, oh God, that's like the worst thing you could have. Oh my gosh. Um, but yes. So Mindy sent in one of these creepiest stories that we've gotten in ghost mail um, about this woman with mismatched fingers. And she sent a handprint that was um, on your car door, right? It was on my front door. On the front door. Ugh. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Well, and uh, when the film comes out, which it's coming out when this is airing tomorrow, um, and so... You'll see. We uh, added little shots of different things from the ghost mail, um, so you'll 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 notice some similarities. So go back and listen to Mindy's ghost mail episode, and then watch the film. And um, so the film is going to actually be on YouTube. So it's going to be uh, the pair of junkies have already seen it at this point, but. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. It'll be there forever, pretty much. Uh, it's going to be public. For and you can just stay up late tonight to watch it. Yeah, technically. Technically, you could. It's going to air at midnight. So um, you can watch it there and make sure to subscribe while you're over on our YouTube if you don't already. Um, and, you know, if you want to support us even more, let it just play on a loop on silent and <laughs> just rack up them views because the more that we view it, uh, the more YouTube acknowledges us. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it. So for those who may have not listened to the ghost mail episode, Mindy, do you want to kind of give us an overview of kind of like what the situation was with the woman with mismatched fingers? Yeah, sure. So for about three days straight, I had the same exact dream about a woman with mismatched fingers that one tall, one short, one tall, um, trying to get into my apartment. And on the fourth morning of the third night, I realized that I hadn't had that dream. And whenever I went to work, I saw that the handprint of her hand up, down, up, down was right on my door. And it freaked me out so bad, but I tried to ignore it, went home after work, nighttime comes around, I lay down in bed to go to sleep, and I look up, and there's the handprint on my ceiling. It, yeah. That is... <laughs> That's the overview. <laughs> oh, my God. Terribly messed up. <laughs> terribly, terribly. And, like, so in your dreams, did it kind of like did you get any idea of like who this person could have been like what the entity like you know like why the entity chose you or any kind of context of why why is her fingers like this i have no clue i've never experienced something like that <laughs> with hands or anything um i just during my dream i was watching her from behind going around to all my windows and my door um, so I don't really know who or what it was. I just, it just came along, I guess. Bizarre. So has it ever happened like with any of your other nightmares or, um, things like that? Or was this like a very singular experience? That one was singular. Most of my nightmares have to do with like abandoned places and trying to escape from them. Uh, they mainly have zombies for some reason. <laughs> 
I mean, zombies are horrifying, you know, it's, um, (laughs) I just find it interesting that it's like, usually you don't dream of like these monsters. I mean, besides, besides zombies, but you know, it's like, um, that all of a sudden you would just have a dream that's reoccurring with a very, very specific entity. Um, and because, like, I, I remember when we were talking about this on Ghost Mail, we were so dumbfounded almost of, like, what this entity could have been, um, considering the fact that it's, like, you don't have a history with this. Like, you... Yeah. And the handprints what really, really sold us in, yeah. the, in the regard of it being just so odd of a incident. Because I've just never heard of an entity that has those mismatchy kind of fingers or yeah when we really you know we're putting it to analysis and i was saying you know there's a familiarity to to the long finger things and um and i recall that there is a a louisiana witch monster uh called uh called madame grand Doit, which is madame long fingers um and she is a child snatcher you know, um, she's kind of a Krampus like character. She's a, a seasonal like uh, I, th- I think she comes out at New Year's Eve and she has these long fingers to, you know, pick children out of their beds. Um, but uh, another thing that came to mind was um, when when non-human entities try to mimic humans, they they get it wrong. There's always something that gets it wrong. Um, and, uh, one of the clearest things that we're going through right now is if you do an AI picture of somebody, oftentimes their hands are so messed up yeah, because the computer yeah. is, it's missing like some element of, of the full recognition or cognition of, of the human form that it messes up the hands. Uh, so then it comes this idea that you're dealing with something that is trying to appear human, but is missing it. Just, you know, it has that one telltale sign that it's not human and it's the hands, you know, these these horribly mismatched hands. You know, what are the doc- I want to know what the doctor said about this. Oh, okay. So uh, for those of y'all who um, can't hear JT, um, JT actually um, asked what uh, doctors say, like, how did the process of like getting to the point where a doctor diagnosed you with a, um, a nightmare disorder kind of go? So it's actually pretty new. Um, I would say about three years ago, I actually started therapy and my therapist was just asking me questions and I was telling her like, Oh, I have nightmares constantly. Is that not normal? (laughs) (laughs) And then she told me to start writing all my dreams in a journal And during one of our sessions, she just read through the journal and was like, this is terrifying. I need you to stop. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Yeah, basically, what doctors like to have is your family history, but I was raised in foster care, so I don't really have Mm. that history. So we kind of just had to wait a couple of months to figure out, oh, this is a pattern. This might be this. And... That's just how it came along. <laughs> and how long have you had these nightmares? I mean, has this always been your whole life? or I would say my whole life, but I'm so used to it that I don't really, I just consider them dreams. Right. <laughs> but whenever I moved out of my, my foster parents' house and started college, that's when everything got like more intense. <laughs> I would say because I was learning how to be an adult and just being out on my own. Um, that's whenever I was like, I think I need to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I mean, and that makes sense. You know, it's, um, I can't imagine going to sleep every day and like having a nightmare, but, um, it's interesting that you say that it's like, um, most of the time it could be rationalized almost like why these nightmares are happening. Like it's because typically, you know, even though dreams and nightmares do tend to go hand in hand with paranormal stuff every once in a while, a lot of times it is just your psyche working through something really bizarre. But I wonder if this entity in particular didn't note 
that you had this situation and it preyed upon it in the way sure. um because entities sometimes um when they know that they can be acknowledged through dreams and stuff they'll come through in that way to deliver messages and i guess sometimes they can also try to um get into your house in the middle of the night because it's just like i've just never heard a story quite like the fact that it's like where the dream turns into an actual physical entity where it's able to leave a handprint that's a really so it, bizarre situation to wrap my head around I, at least i think i have heard things similar i have heard of of the nightmare that then has some kind of waking world um uh effect uh where uh you know sometimes it's as simple as you know waking up in the middle of the night with with this nightmare scenario that you know something is 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 wrong in you know the children's room and then when you go into the children's room there's you know um that the child had fallen out of the crib but hadn't made any right. noise or 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 something to that effect um the awareness of of something going on in the physical world that is you know um i i used to have terrible nightmares i had two periods of time when i had just god awful nightmares and i used to have a recurring nightmare from like early childhood into my 20s um about being murdered um oh. and so you know it's interesting when you start to like really start balancing it's like well what was your brain really trying to hone in on and what were what what were the the incidences <laughs> that would lead you to to latch on to these kinds of things because ideally when you're asleep, your brain is processing information, some fragments of, of consciousness, uh, images from your life, and, and putting it into a narrative because your brain craves narr you know, a narrative. And that narrative is you know, oftentimes you know, bizarre flights of fancy, strange, peculiar things. But if you have high anxiety and high stress, then it's going to take all those stressful <laughs> images and those right. ang anxious uh, 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 elements and, and put them in a line. Um, and then, you know, if you are fitful and you have nightmares repeatedly, if you're in the presence of an entity that is looking for a host or for a connection, an anchor to this world, then, well, and think about that. Like, imagine, let me weave a tale for you. Uh, imagine that you are, uh, you know, staying in a home that, that has in its, in, in its walls a, a, a dark entity and this dark entity is just there and not able to present itself or, or manifest or do anything. And then there's a person who wakes up in the middle of the night, you know, in starts and fits all of a sudden the disruption of the energy of the night is now, Oh, there's something here. Oh, that person's aware. That person's awake. That person is there. And, and, and it just focuses in, it starts to draw in to the source of this new consciousness in the middle of the sleeping night. And now it has a door, and then you become the door for whatever it is. Um, not to say that's what's happening. It's just to, to, to posit a theory on the kinds of interactions you can have, because there are people who believe fully that there is a dream realm, like it's a right. dimension of its own, that when we go into our dreams, we're actually astral projecting. We're, 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 right. we're, we're going to a, a, a place that is occupied by entities that are trapped in the in in that realm um but could conceivably push through to our world just the way we are pushing through to theirs so you know there's and that is a bizarre theory that you know that right. that that is a out there construct um but it's it's not uncommon to think that we go to dreamlands we go to dream realms when we go to sleep um and those dream realms are occupied. They're not, you know, and they're shared. That's another thing. Uh, you know, if you've ever experienced people who had shared dreams, who, who, you know, have this notion that, you know, when they go to sleep, they go to a place and they see their friends and their friends are like, oh, I dreamt about you. Like, I dreamt about you last night. And, mm -hmm. and you have this, you know, interesting connective thing. Um, so there is, there is beliefs that allow for the idea that uh, you go to a dark part of dreamland <laughs> and the dark denizens of dreamland see you and they're like, oh, let's follow that one. 
Right. And they follow you right back into the waking world. Well, and it's, it, I, it's kind of in that same realm of, um, I don't know if you ever heard people say like, uh, if you lucid dream, ask somebody in your dream what time it is oh, right. and like watch how they all get really angry or something like that. It's a really bad thing to do. You should not do that. Um, but oh, <laughs> because you're not supposed to be able to cognitively right. ask questions and things like that in your dreams. Um, and that kind of led me to wondering is like, have you ever had any kind of like astral projecting type sensations or has like any, like even loved ones um, come to visit you in dreams or things like that? Because uh, a lot of times dreams tend to go with people who are claircognizant um, and because dreams like being able to have dreams or interact with spirits in dreams is a subsection of claircognizance. So it makes me wonder if you don't have like a little bit of that as well going on. Um, so I never even thought about the astral projecting until the TikTok was posted of y'all reading my story and somebody said, I don't think she's dreaming. I think she's projecting. And I was like, please don't. <laughs> well, your dream, you're following the entity trying to get into your house, which sounds like an astral projection, which sounds like you left your body right. and you're following this thing trying to get into your house, which is interesting because it may be you have incredible psychic protection, meaning your subconscious knows when danger is near and left your body to investigate, to figure out what it was. So, you know, that puts the, the, the lady with mismatched fingers, it puts her in a category of she might be to the locale of where their house was. Right. She may be, That's interesting. you know, something of that place and, and was coming. And your, 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 your mind said, oh, there's something outside. Oh, there's something that wants in, you know, and it, and it didn't derive from you. It is, uh, you know, you had a defense mechanism that was like, hey, pay attention. This thing wants in the house and it was showing you her trying to get into the house. Um, and where was this again? The, the events of the of the of the mismatched finger lady. <laughs> it's my apartment in Alabama. <laughs> oh, you still live there? Yes, I still live here. Oh, Excellent. God. Okay, okay, never mind. No, I, I meant nothing of that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, <laughs> no, but it, it might be interesting to look into the folklore of that region. Yeah. You know, because there might be some kind of telltale thing. Because the other thing about, like, mangled hands, there's, there's, there's a number of interesting, like, mangled hand things. Um, the mangled hand uh, thing that comes uh, quickly to mind is uh, during many of the Inquisition and witch trial eras, mm. uh, hand torture was a big way to get people to confess. You know, uh, uh, pressing hands, uh, applying th screws to the hands, you know, uh, just doing terrible things to the hands was a big thing in that regard. Um, one of the oldest protective charms on the planet uh, is 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 an image of a hand yep. uh, with the eye and the the lotus uh, the flowers coming off of yep. it, yep. Um, and that is uh, you know one of those things where it's like the hand has always been kind of this symbol of of protection. So when it's warped, when it is distorted, you're now looking at you know something terrible. You know, uh, many people think of the hand of God coming in and, and helping. Well, what is a mangled hand? What is the, you know, what is this, this perversion of a hand? Because if, 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 if a, uh, a normal hand is the symbol of, of help, then what is, you know, the, the, the mangled and mismatched hand, what is it telling us? Um, so yeah, I would look into like, the the region and see if there are any stories oh i'm gonna hijack it again i was gonna go to? yeah i will google google it. <laughs> google alabama hand lady or something i don't <laughs> alabama know alabama hand lady <laughs> yeehaw <laughs> uh, hang on i'm putting my safe search on <laughs> 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 because 
I find that I was thinking the exact same thing um, because a lot of times, so actually the the man who made the hands for the film um, and was a man who has been on the podcast. He's one of JT's best friends. He also had nightmare issues when he was a child and he also had an experience that he talked about on the podcast about astral projecting but his entities that usually came to him he correlated to his culture because he's from venezuela so i find we've heard this a lot about different entities are attracted to different people depending on their nationality or their culture in general um because they can sense um what what is the space? Well, the first thing that came up was Witch in the Woods. Ooh. Oh. Do you live in the woods? Of... I actually live in the middle of town. Oh, okay. <laughs> but during that time, I was planning a solo hiking trip. Oh, interesting. It's in Gadsden. Gadsden? Gadsden. Gadsden County? Yeah, Gadsden, Alabama. Uh... <laughs> Legend says a woman was a witch who lived in a shack deep in the woods and her evil soul still lingers on to frighten and bedevil the good folk of Alabama. <laughs> it went from country to, like, uh, Tolkien in, like, two seconds. <laughs> but... Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to read like that. <laughs> yes. Ooh, there, there's a Hell's Gate in Oxford. What was that, Jay? Were there any parts of the movie that uh, seemed ultra-realistic? Yes. Uh, so JT asked, um, were there any parts of the movie that were particularly realistic to the dream? When she was reaching for the doorknob, I could not watch it. I watched it like three times, and I only forced myself to see that scene of her hand going towards the doorknob once. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was JT's idea, um, because... He loves those types of like moments is very like intense with small moments. Um, yes. And I agree because the fingers were so perfect to like you only see like them kind of going down, but you can see how gnarled they are. And when we were filming that, it was pitch black outside. It was pouring down rain and um we were just in Chris's house with no lights on. And I'm like, this is horrifying. It's pretty scary. Yeah. This is so <laughs> freaky, you know? Um, so I can't imagine having an actual um, Alabama hand lady coming at you. Um, <laughs> cause There's also a spirit in Alabama called Huggin' Molly. Ew. The legend of Huggin' Molly. It's uh, unique to the town of Abbeville, but it is uh, apparently a woman who comes to hug you. Ew. I don't want to be hugged by her. She's a woman who is said to have lost an infant and now appears to children, uh, but only at night. And she would squeeze them tightly and then scream in their ears. Are there any other nightmares that she had that are like of that caliber? Seven feet tall. She was seven feet tall. Ew. Oh, wait. This figure is seven feet tall. Wearing dark clothing and a wide brimmed hat. The Abbeville, ha yeah, and the Abbeville Hat Man. <laughs> yes, who likes to hug people. Ugh. The huggy, the huggy kind of Hat ghost. Man. Nobody um, wants the huggy kind of ghost. So another question is: um, Did you have like any other nightmares in particular that were kind of like up to that caliber, or was that kind of like the top tier? I mean, that would be top tier in general, but. Yeah, it's definitely in my top tier because it happened three nights in a row. I don't think I've had any last more than a night. But, like, throughout that night, I'll have the same dream over and over again. Sure. But it will only last for one night. <laughs> and have, It hasn't been anything close to that. <laughs> right, right. Which does make it feel like it was something kind of in the locale or might have been passing through the area or whatever it be. And it just kind of noted that it's like, Ooh, this might be a good spot. Do you live like on like, a, like the first floor or something? And maybe that could have been a situation. It's only a one story apartment. Ooh. Mm. But it was a house that they renovated to be three apartments. So maybe somebody lived here before me. Ooh. Yeah, it's just the fingers, though. Like, were they so... 
I think I, where I'm getting hung up is like, were the fingers like, did they look like they were different fingers sewn on? Did they look like a deformity? Like, like what kind of fingers are we talking here? Like, <laughs> they were a deformity. You could tell that they belonged on her hand. They were just different sizes. Weird. You know, because it's like, I mean, so the thing is with entities that have like who died with an injury, they have to be aware of sustaining that injury. Like when they had passed to actually have that as like a ghost or a spirit. But it also makes me wonder if maybe she was a corrupted individual because like maybe whenever she was alive, and this is just saying if she was like an actual living human being, but right. I'm not fully convinced because of crawling on the ceiling and stuff. That's not convincing <laughs> me. Um, but if we are talking in the realm of if she was a, at one point living human being, it wasn't uncommon for people who had disabilities or oh, yeah. natural deformities to be shunned. Yep. And sometimes people, when they are shunned by society, they become corrupt. And so it's possible she was, you know, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what she would have gained by scaring the crap out of you besides maybe just like, you know, that, that energy and that's what's sustaining her. But the reason why it doesn't, you know, come, completely um convince me is because usually entities that were living don't crawl on the ceiling i've never really heard of a spirit that was like oh you know uncle joe he likes, yeah, to, he crawl likes on, to crawl on the ceiling <laughs> he likes to crawl on the ceiling now it's like it may be with the child spirit maybe if they figure how, out how to do that but you know it's like that would be the only one what is that that's horrifying chris yeah but anywho <laughs> Um, but yes, so I guess like, since you have all these nightmare issues, what made you want to continue learning about the paranormal? Cause I feel like, <laughs> no, for real, like, cause yeah, I wonder, I fuel them if, if, <laughs> well, cause it's, I know a lot of people who have like uh, disorders like that, who want nothing to do with the paranormal because they're like, I got enough of it going on in my own head. I don't need um, to hear more. What kind of made you want to continue learning about it? So I've noticed that what helps with my nightmares is actually watching scary movies. Mm. And I feel like it's a, my mind is like, Oh, I don't have to come up with it now kind of thing. And you know, I love scary movies, and then I wanted to research the monsters behind them. And so I just fell down a rabbit hole. <laughs> That's basically how I ended up following this, is to avoid, because uh, my imagination runs wild, so I need stories. Yeah. The stories kind of, I, I, call, I call ghost stories ghost traps. Because if the ghost is in a story, that's where it belongs. You know, and if I can find the story for the ghost, then I don't have to be plagued by it. You know, it, it, it's in the story. Um, and, and that has been, you know, since I was six years old, kind of the, the motif is if I can find out, no matter how scary it is finding out, it's better than not finding out. <laughs> it's right. better than not knowing. No, that makes sense. Um, you know, because it's like if you take the mystery out of it, I guess, if you watch the horror movies and you're like, okay, I know how this is going to end, or you can just tell yourself it's like a movie or something. I could, I could understand that being the case. Did you watch like a lot of zombie movies and maybe that's why the zombies. Oh, I love zombie movies. <laughs> so every night, like... which came first, the zombie dreams or the zombie movies? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Scary movies were kind of banned in my house growing up. Really? <laughs> So you had parents who didn't like scary movies and stuff as a kid? Yes. Oh. Um, I would, I loved Goosebump books, and I had to hide the fact that I loved Goosebump. <laughs> I completely understand that. I loved Goosebumps <laughs> as well. But I've never thought about, you know, it's like, it's almost, it makes it almost enjoyable, I guess, because if you love zombie movies and you have zombie dreams all the time, then it's like, okay, cool. It's like a new, <laughs> like you're like writing a zombie movie in your head every night. So it's, uh, <laughs> um, so do you, uh, suffer from sleep paralysis as well? Or have you ever had that? I have, 
I don't, but my sister does. Oh. oh interesting. I I have two blood related sisters and one of them has sleep paralysis and one of them I think she also has nightmares, but she doesn't really talk about them. Sure. So it could just be something that's like within the family. Interesting. Um, which I mean, does it, it makes sense to a degree, but like, so your siblings have never told you like about like maybe having a similar experience or like if they have similar types of nightmares as you. Um, so one believes if you talk about it, it happens, like it comes true. Sure. <laughs> So I try not to even tell her my nightmares, but the other one that has the sleep paralysis issues, we talk about nightmares and what she's experienced all the time. I can understand, you know, it's, um, well, and that's not uncommon for people who like are horrified of paranormal or things like that, especially if, you know, you're really afraid of it you know, not wanting to speak it into existence because um, that's actually like a pretty long standing belief for a lot of people is that if you speak the name of the entity or you speak the whatever it is, um, like uh, it, there's a reason why like in Appalachia, you don't yeah. say certain things or do certain things because you don't want it to come near you. So, I mean, yeah. it's um it's a fair it's a fair reasoning. But I do find it interesting that like your both your siblings also have the same disorder in a way um, because it's not a super common disorder at all, which is fascinating. Is there um is there a medical term for it at all? For uh, nightmare disorders? Uh, if there is, I don't know it. I just know it has a nightmare disorder. I mean, and that makes sense, too. Yeah, that's pretty direct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's pretty It's pretty yeah. direct. You don't need anything more. Uh, <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> no Latin. Uh, <laughs> and they, um, they didn't, like, make you do, like, a whole sleep test or anything like that when you were getting Not diagnosed? Really. Not really. When it comes to that, they were mainly focused on the pattern. Right. Sure. Seeing how often they happen and what they were kind of thing. Right. How many per week? Yeah. Um, how many uh, nightmares do you have per week usually? Uh, I have them every time I sleep. <laughs> oh, God. That's so... I, like I said, like I'm so used to it. They're dreams. Like the nightmare I had a couple of days ago was so funny to me, <laughs> but it was a nightmare. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And that was, I turned into a rotisserie chicken and I was trapped in public and I had to escape. <laughs> free. It, yeah, that could have been a nightmare, but it was hilarious. I mean, technically, I guess that is a nightmare. It is a nightmare, but it is funny too. A, a Publix rotisserie chicken? Oh well, my God. So you just ruined dinner. <laughs> That's. A- that's really good though so there are like nightmares that you have that like are there any other ones that you found like really interesting or like not necessarily in the same like notability as a mismatch finger lady but um like in a way that they stood out stood out yeah oh that's a good question (laughs) trying to think there was one where i was trapped in an ice cream truck like i had broken into an ice cream truck and i was trapped in it and i was on like some type of time like i needed to get out or something bad would have happened and like the next day my two older sisters talked about when they were little breaking into an ice cream truck just randomly oh Interesting. So it's almost like the nightmares are kind of like escape rooms in a way. Like, because you said there's a, a lot of like abandoned yeah. buildings. Abandoned and buildings, yeah. trying to get out. Are you good at escape rooms? I've only been to one and we got out in, in pretty good time. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's an unorthodox therapy. Go it to an escape room. Go to an escape room if you have. <laughs> Well, so we had talked about, you know, like it being like a clear cognizance in a way, but I don't, I don't know if it necessarily is. I think it might just be one of those things, those weird things that the brain does. But unfortunately, sometimes entities prey upon those things, um, you know, especially 
when we're asleep because we're so vulnerable <laughs> when we're asleep. That's why people pray before they go to bed. They, you know, invoke different angels or deities to watch over them when they sleep um, because we are just like lumps that are so unaware. Well, I mean, even the word nightmare is a folklore word. You know, we, we, we come up with these things, but, you know, we believe that bad dreams were caused by bad entities. And, you know, the nightmare is actually a, 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 a galloping horse <laughs> that wakes you from your sleep. You know, uh, you had the nightmare. You know, it, it, it drove you to be awake. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's what where nightmare derives I didn't from. think I, I knew that. Yeah. But I mean, uh, and that's true. You know, uh, Shakespeare has Queen Mab, mm -hmm. who who you know goes into your mind and 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 gives you these terrible you know nightmare dreams. Uh, most pantheons of of beliefs have the dream lord, mm -hmm. the uh, Morpheus, the the idea of a a a god figure who is in charge of of what happens to you in your sleep. So you know there is there's a long connection to our concept of uh, how the supernatural plays with us in our subconscious. It's, it's true, you know, and, um, and then some people are just more susceptible, especially people who astral project or, yep. um, and astral projecting can be a singular experience too. Sometimes your body just for some reason and your spirit just decides, I'm going to try this one out for yeah. size and see what happens. Gotta go but, for a run. So my uncle loves scary stuff and he watched the movie uh, yesterday and he just texted me because I told him that we have you on the podcast and uh, he, he texted me uh, just now and he wants to know what are you going to do if the woman comes back and will you try and kill her? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh God. Well, first I'll get her autograph. Yes. <laughs> the handprint is enough. So when we did, okay, I haven't told a lot of people about this, but when we did the live stream of the behind the scenes, that night I had a dream that she was choking me. <gasps> but I was so tired that I was like, I'm too tired for this. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, Kato. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'm that, too tired. <laughs> that's so funny. Like in the dream she was choking you or like you felt like she actually was in the room doing it? I felt like she was actually doing it, but I constantly have a water bottle next to me, and sometimes I'll drink in my sleep and just choke a little bit. Oh, no. So that's probably what was happening, but in my dream, like, and it happened for a split second where I was like, oh, there she is. I'm too tired for this. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Interesting. Well, and it's like, Oh God, did we like accidentally invoke her into your life? Goodness gracious. <laughs> because like. Maybe you should set up a camera in your room when you sleep. Oh yeah. You know, a night vision camera, one of those security cameras, or, or if you have a, a video camera that has night vision, just one night, just kind mm -hmm. of watch yourself sleep. See what, what that, what you physically do, how, how, how fitful you are, things of that nature. Also, you might catch a glimpse of some spooky spooky coming after you. Yeah. Boogity, boogity. yeah yes. that's right <laughs> yeah no that's actually a really good idea you're full to the top with woogity woogity find the woogity boogity. <laughs> yeah i wish that there like were cameras set up so you could see well i and not for you but like for us to see like the <laughs> the lady crawling up to the <laughs> ceiling because i would have loved to know what she looked like doing that and like why she was on your ceiling like was she watching you is she trying to get out the window and that was just like the fun way to go about it like <laughs> you know it's because I can't get over the ceiling thing. Like, the door thing, that makes sense, you know? Like, she was like, ah, I'm, like, trying to get into the door. But, like, why were, why are, why are you on the ceiling? That it's seems weird. so purposeful. I had you know? a friend. Yeah. So, I've talked about it before on the podcast where um, I have a, a, a process by which I protect myself. I call it the white box. And it's basically a protective box that I put my fear in or, I, you know, I imagine I, I had a friend who had something very similar that where he talked about that every night before he goes to bed, he would have um, this thing where he would, he would like try to create a force field around him 
and he would like you know use all of his goodwill and you know it's, it was kind of like his evening prayer his evening mantra and he actually said one night when he he woke up from a nightmare and he saw something trying to get through his little bubble but it was up against the ceiling so it couldn't get to him but it was like on on the bubble trying to get to him what? yeah and i was like that's so freaky and, and what was it and he said it was a like it looked like a big bug Ew. Like like this big like beetle or something that was just like pfft, trying to get to him. And and so like now I'm thinking, what if what if you know, mismatched fingers lady came in and couldn't get to you and so she's on top of a protective bubble and she's like, What am I doing here? Yeah. Al- <laughs> you don't get me off of this thing. <laughs> Alabama hand lady. She's just like, Alabama hand lady. <laughs> she can't get through. Because <laughs> well, and I mean like when it comes to darker, more malevolent entities, it's a lot harder for them to get to us than one would think. People think that we're always just these vulnerable, you know, like things walking through life. But a lot of us, because of our innate feeling that nothing bad's going to happen to us or like that wouldn't happen to me it makes it that's a pretty intense faith to have in like existing it's true you know it's very true um and so just that alone makes it a lot harder for more malevolent entities to get to you so or maybe she found you curious and she wanted to you know well yeah i i think you you have that too is is what doors do we open when we like accept nightmares as a regular thing what doors do we open when we're comfortable with 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 dark and scary? And you know, uh, are we inviting, or at very least, thinning the wall between malevolent forces and ourselves when we when we have these open discussions and when mm-hmm. we have all these things? Um, you know, uh, we were just talking earlier about haunted items that you know, we have hanging here. It's like I have a lot of haunted items, but I'm not allowed to bring them in the house um, yeah. because my wife is like, no. And so that, you know, uh, is the kind of behavior that's probably, you know, keeping me alive is to have somebody be like, no, no, not in the house. Or like the TikTok where it's like <laughs> tattoos are opening demon yeah. portals. <laughs> did you see that TikTok? Oh, it's, I loved it. I uh, yeah. As Eni uh, had, had, had mm-hmm. reposted it. Yeah, yeah, there was a TikTok that went around that was like, when you get a tattoo, you're opening a demon portal yeah. and all or that. Or piercing, yeah. yeah tattoo or, or piercing. Yes, which is not the case, but very funny. And um, <laughs> it's like, maybe that's why we're all so haunted nowadays. But... <laughs> But yes, um, but it is true. There's a number of different reasons why um, entities choose us or we have these experiences. But nonetheless, it's a very, very scary story. And I'm sorry that it happened to you, but yeah. thank you for sharing yes, it with absolutely. us because it is so enthralling and a story that I will always keep with me just because I, I love it. Um, not that it happened to you, but like, I love the, the concept it's of a, it. A, it's a story. It's a good, and it's complete in a lot of ways. You know, um, it punctuates at, you know, seeing something in the physical world and that, you know, so many ghost stories and, and I, I cannot stress this enough. So many ghost stories do not have a narrative. They don't, mm-hmm. you know, they are, they are momentary uh, uh, things that, that you can't, you can only say, well, that was weird, but you know, you have this kind of fascinating uh, uh, series of events, and it actually ends in the ending of the nightmare as well. Since the, right. the nightmares didn't continue, you and you know, in the twilight zone way, it's like, well, the the nightmares don't continue because she's now in the waking world. She's she she doesn't have to come in your dreams, um, and there's a good chance that she wants to get as far away from you as possible, too. Because if you were the way that she came into this world, you were very likely the way that she'll be booted out. So, so you know, there is, there's a good chance that she will try to avoid you like the plague. Or, um, because you are, in fact, the one thing that could send her back to wherever she came from. I mean, it's true. Yeah. 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 It was the easiest script I picked out. It was the easiest script that I've like, ever had to write, really. 
Yeah, JT said that was the easiest script he's ever had to write because it was just so perfectly crafted as a story in general. Um, Just because it's like, you're right, it has such a hard punctuation to it because it's like, okay, she clearly got what she wanted. She got in. Um, And when you see our version of the film, it's a little bit more twisted. Don't worry. But it's um, (laughs) that isn't what actually happened to Mindy, so don't worry. Um, 80%. Yeah, 80%. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but we took our liberties in some ways, just even though it didn't need it. I mean, it's still it just as it. freaky, but, but you know, we for like cinematic that. power, we potency. Upgraded we yeah. upgraded the scare. <laughs> we upgraded you know? it, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, and it was so fun to make. And I just imagine, like, when we watched um, Marianne, like, outside with the fingers, or when she put on the fingers and stuff, I was like, I can't imagine, like, just being in my room un- unknowingly, just seeing this appearing yeah. and stuff. Like, I'm like, that's horrifying. And I know Marianne. She's the sweetest. She's the sweetest woman. <laughs> she's so sweet. And I'm like, God, you're horrifying looking. Like, and she's like, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and she she ran with it too. Um, we did make her scarier looking for the film, which was fun for JT. Yeah, because we put some VFX on her face to make her look creepy. Because, um, like, did you? I know you got a, obviously a good look at her hands, but did you get like a good look at her face or anything like that? Like, did she have any facial features at all? So I described her as the. The lady in the movie Mama, like that. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. But I've never seen that movie. It wasn't until I Googled her description, like my Nightmare Woman's description, when Mama popped up. And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. That's interesting because um, that entity in that movie had very twisty, twisty hands as well. Did she it was, really? Yeah. I don't think I've watched She had a whole twisty, her whole, it, her whole body was like, twisted um and interestingly enough that was primarily an actor uh i i had thought it was all cgi but it was actually an actor who was able to contort and to do things and they put a you know prosthetic on and a a terrifying terrifying entity if you haven't seen the movie it's a really good movie yeah i don't know if i've seen it we might have we watch a lot of movies i'm like I haven't. Okay, great. Well, maybe we'll watch that tonight because that sounds. It gives you an idea because that's funny because I think in the first time we read it, I thought of Mama. I thought of that that entity because it's such a. It's very striking. Well, maybe that'll be the next research thing to see if Mama um, was comes like from, comes from a, a bit of folklore or something like that but yeah there's a strong Guillermo del Toro vibe to Mama yes so it's, it, it has that like aesthetic right right oh well thank you so much Mindy for coming on today and sharing your trauma with us and um <laughs> <laughs> And letting us all have uh, the space to talk about our spooky experiences and stuff. Um, So we appreciate you. And uh, thank you for letting us turn it into a film, especially because that was so much fun. Um, But yeah. And if you have any more crazy experiences like that, please let let us know because we'd love to hear about them. Um, Absolutely. I don't hope that you have any more crazy experiences like that, but if you have any more, let us know. Um, but if I find my journal, I'm planning on sending it to y'all. Oh, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Although, something worth thinking about is you should probably publish these. You should think about, you know, uh, uh, you know, revision, editing, and putting it together because. It makes for an interesting anthology, but more than anything else, it is an interesting roadmap to our subconscious. And so, you know, you can release it on many levels. It can come out as, you know, this horror book of, 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 of scary stories. But more than that, it's, you know, the, uh, the varied dreams, you know, as cataloged by the dreamer. Uh, I think that that could be a, of a, an enormous help, too, to people who suffer from nightmare disorders. It's true. Yep. That's a really cool idea. That is it. I would read that. Yes. Send yeah. it to me, and then I'll I'll send it back. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
But, uh, well, thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, and if you have a ghost mail that you want to send us, you never know, we might make it into a short film, just like Mindy. Um, please do so by sending it to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Also, uh, when the film drops at 12 a.m. Um, on Wednesday... Uh, so tonight, yes, basically tonight, uh, do make sure to go ahead and check that out. We really appreciate it. We worked very hard on it. Um, and so we'd love to see y'all enjoy it as well. Um, you can find that on our YouTube at Red Eye Film Productions and make sure to subscribe while you're over there. Um, but with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>